Let's talk about Midjourney's long list of parameters. When you submit a text prompt like this, Midjourney uses your default settings to control certain things like aspect ratio and which model to use. Each of these is a parameter and you can override a default setting by including the specific parameter directly in your prompt like this. Parameters start with two dashes, followed by the parameter name or abbreviation, a space, and the value that goes with that parameter. Here, I've used the aspect ratio parameter to tell Midjourney that I want a three to four image instead of the default square. Parameters always go at the end of your prompt and to use multiple parameters, just separate each one with a space. But these parameters that you see in your settings aren't the only parameters that Midjourney has. There are in fact dozens of parameters that can be used to customize your prompts. This video is going to be a bit of a crash course in Midjourney parameters, so if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and I'll respond. Okay, let's get started. Probably the most important one to start with is version. Version controls which Midjourney model generates your images. My default model right now is 6.1, soon to be 7. To use a different model, I could change my default, but if I just want to generate a few images, the better way is to override the default in the prompt itself by including the version parameter. Some parameters have two ways that they can be called. For example, either of these, dash dash version 3 or v3, will run my prompt with the v3 model. Each Midjourney model has a specific look and prompt understanding, so it can be really fun to try prompts across different versions to see how much Midjourney has changed over the last few years. These are the current values that you can use with the version parameter. 7.0 and 7.1 will be added soon, but these aren't the only Midjourney models available to use. Test and Test P were intermediary models between V4 and V5. They do not use dash dash V, but instead they can be called with dash dash test or test P. Midjourney also has anime trained models, which can be called by including dash dash Niji followed by the model number. Next we have aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is the relationship between the width and the height of your image, and it's always written as width colon height. The default is one to one or a square. To change it, use dash dash AR followed by the aspect ratio. You must use whole numbers here, no decimals. And there is a limit as to how tall or wide your images can be. With the V6 models, you can go up to approximately 14 to one or one to 14. For some of these parameters like aspect ratio, I have dedicated videos that go more in depth. So be sure to check those out if you wanna learn more. Next we have chaos. Chaos affects the diversity of the results in your image grid. It's listed as variety in your default settings on the web, but the parameter itself is dash dash chaos or C. The default value is zero and it takes whole numbers up to 100, which is maximum diversity. I tend to use chaos five in a lot of my prompts just to shake up the results a little. Next, we have several style related parameters. The first is stylize or dash dash S. Each Midjourney model has a default visual aesthetic, and Stylize controls the strength of that aesthetic in your results. The default value is 100 and the range is 0 to 1000. A higher value will give you more stylized results, but with potentially reduced prompt adherence. The Stylize parameter is also used in conjunction with personalization, which we'll get to later. Then we have my favorite Midjourney parameter, Style Reference. Style Reference, or SREF, was introduced after the V6 model release and is one of Midjourney's most powerful features. When you include a style reference, Midjourney will take aesthetic elements like color palette, medium, texture, and overall style and apply those to your results. You can use one or more image URLs, one or more SREF code numbers, or put the word random after the SREF parameter and Midjourney will apply a random style for you. The SREF system is expected to work a little differently with V7, so for the latest information, be sure to check out my channel where I have several videos about style reference. Style weight or SW controls the weight or influence of the style reference on your results. The default value is 100 and the range is zero to 1000 where 1000 is maximum strength. For a more subtle influence, try a value of 15. And really quickly, I will mention style version or SV this parameter is currently only relevant for the 6 and 6.1 models and only for when you use image URLs as style references. 
The style reference feature has gone through four iterations in V6 and SV is a way to access those different versions. Okay, next let's talk about the style parameter. This is not the same as style reference. Style shows up as mode in your default settings. Many people like to use style raw to minimize the influence of Midjourney's style aesthetic on the results, and it can be helpful for when you want more photorealistic images. The style parameter has been around since version 5.1, and if you're using the V5 models, you can use style with the V5 style codes, which was Midjourney's first iteration on coming up with a style reference feature, and I have a whole video on that. And the Niji 5 model also has different style modes that affect aesthetics, to my knowledge, the V6 models only have style raw. If you know of any other style modes for V6, let me know. The quality parameter controls how much time or power Midjourney puts into generating your images. The default value is one. Lower values mean faster image generation, but they may be less detailed. Higher values result in slower image generation, but they may be more detailed. Different Midjourney models accept different quality values. Next, we have three parameters that control how fast your images are generated, Turbo, Fast, and Relax. Turbo and Fast use your fast GPU hours that come with your subscription each month, and Relaxed Mode does not. Relax Mode is not available with all subscriptions. You can set your default speed mode in your settings, but if you want to override it for a specific job, you can include it as a parameter. Repeat is used to tell Midjourney to run the same prompt multiple times. It can only be used with fast or turbo mode. Let's say you want to run five jobs with the same prompt. Just include dash dash repeat or R space five. The video parameter doesn't do what you think it might do, but it creates a short time lapse of your initial image grid being generated. To use it, include dash dash video in the prompt. You can use this parameter on both the web and Discord. However, I recommend only using it when you're prompting on Discord because once your initial image grid is complete, you need to react to it with the envelope emoji. Then you will get a direct message from the Midjourney bot that contains a link to the video. The stop parameter lets you end image generation early. It takes values between 10 and 100. For example, adding dash dash stop 50 means stop at 50% completion. This can be useful for when you want softer, more abstract results. Image weight or IW can only be used with image prompts. There are multiple ways to use images in your Midjourney prompts, I'll link a video, but an image prompt specifically is when you have one or more images placed at the beginning of your prompt, followed by your prompt text. The images can be used to influence composition, subject matter, style, and colors. Image weight controls how much influence those images have on your results. The default value is one, and in Midjourney V6, it takes decimal values between zero and three. Character reference is similar to style reference, but instead of matching a visual aesthetic provided by the reference image, it tries to match the character. To use it, type your prompt, then add dash dash CREF, a space, and paste in the URL of your character reference image. On the web, you can also drag and drop in your character reference, just make sure you select the little character icon once you've added your reference image. The character weight parameter, CW, can be used to control how closely Midjourney adheres to the clothing and sometimes hairstyle of your reference character. The default value is 100 and the range is 0 to 100. When character weight is 100, Midjourney will lock onto the face and clothing of the reference character. When it's zero, Midjourney will only lock onto the face, allowing you to change the clothing while retaining the character's facial features. For a deep dive into character reference, including how to prompt for multiple reference characters, make sure you check out the videos linked below. Personalization is your secret weapon for getting images that match your preferred visual aesthetics. It basically lets you create your own custom Midjourney model. To use it, you first need to teach Midjourney about your style. I have more on that in another video. Then you can include personalize or dash dash P in your prompt to apply it to your results or set it as your default in the settings menu. When enabled, your personalized model will override the default Midjourney aesthetic. Here you can see the difference between Midjourney's default style and my personalized style. Earlier, we talked about the stylize parameter, which is used to control the strength of the default Midjourney aesthetic. But when personalization is enabled, it acts on that instead. 
There is a lot of ongoing development with personalization, so be sure to check out my channel for the latest. Next, let's talk about the no parameter. No tells Midjourney what you don't want in your image. Add dash dash no, followed by whatever you want to exclude. If there are multiple things, you can separate them with commas. Whenever you want Midjourney to avoid something specific, don't include it in your main prompt text. Exclusionary phrases like this won't be interpreted in the same way that you and I read it. Instead, try using the no parameter, which will downweight specific words and phrases. Tile is the ultimate parameter for creating repeating patterns. Just add dash dash tile to your prompt. It doesn't require any values and the resulting images can be tiled to create a seamless repeating pattern. If you will be upscaling your tile results, be sure to use version 6.1 or higher because previous upscalers will modify the borders of the image enough that it breaks the seamless pattern. Next, we have the seed parameter. Each Midjourney job starts with a canvas of visual noise, and each noise pattern is linked to what's called a seed number. Think of this as the initialization point for your image grid. When you submit a job, a seed number is randomly assigned by default. But if you want to use a particular seed number, use the seed parameter. Here I'm using seed 1111, and when I run this exact same prompt multiple times, I get similar results because each image grid is starting with the same visual noise pattern. Seed is really useful for when I'm testing how parameter values or other prompt modifications affect results. Here, for example, you can clearly see how increasing the stylized value affected these results. Seed has pretty specific use cases and it's possible that you may never need to use it, but it's there if you do. Did you know that Midjourney has a weird parameter? This one doesn't get very much attention, but it can be quite useful. The default value for weird or dash dash W is zero and it takes values up to 3000. Higher values create increasingly strange and unexpected results. Because the results can be a bit unpredictable and weird isn't completely compatible with some of the other parameters, it can take a bit more experimenting to see what value you prefer for a given prompt. I sometimes use a value of one, three, or five just to shake up my results a bit and make things more interesting. All of these parameters are compatible with the V6 models, and I think it's safe to assume that many of them will be available with the next set of models. There are some parameters that I did not cover because they're only relevant for older models and I didn't want to cause too much confusion. To stay up to date with the complete list of Midjourney parameters, you can download my free parameter guide. I will update it as new parameters become available. For instance, Midjourney may be releasing a batch size parameter soon that allows you to generate grids of eight images instead of four, so keep an eye out for that. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining the Patreon community where I share monthly prompt collections and mid-journey guides. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you the next one.